Today I feel Notte Ferrari Worker So Mattia Binotto has resigned from Ferrari. He is gone. After what was a bit of a letdown in 2022, and the reports did surface that Ferrari were looking at different options to lead the team going forward, were countered by Ferrari themselves, saying that the rumors were without foundation. And here we are two weeks later, and Binotto has resigned. So what's going on at Ferrari? Why has it been 15 years since we have won a title? Why has it been so long? This great team has quite the reputation. It has the allure that many teams don't have. It's like Manchester United in a way. They're not the best at the moment, but if you're a player and the phone rings, you got to be at least tempted. Mattia Bonotto actually is like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, a legend in his own right in the past, but leading the group and leading the team, it just didn't really work out. So we all know that Fred Vasua is the favorite or the most talked about to replace Mattia. He has that relationship with Charles Leclerc, which goes back many, many years. They are very tight, very strong. Ferrari are very keen to secure Leclerc for the future. They want to build the team around him. Ferrari are good on the driver's front, I think. I really do feel like Charles Leclerc is an extreme talent who has the capabilities to fight for a championship and just be a solid, reliable driver. Carlos Sainz is also a great driver and gets along with Charles Leclerc very well. Those two are friends away from the track and that dynamic works really well. There's a lot of harmony in that relationship between the drivers, which is of course very important if they're gonna fight for a title one day. Will that change? Well, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see for that. Here we are, 15 years after the last World Drivers title. Now, we all know that the Schumacher days, the dominance that I grew up watching was incredible, unprecedented, and on another level. Schumacher, Braun, Jean Todd, you'll hear those names all the time when you think of Ferrari greatness and when someone says, why aren't Ferrari that good anymore? Everyone will say, because they had Schumacher, they had Jean Todd, they had Ross Braun. Three of the best minds and talents to ever be in Formula One. I was watching a video by Aidan Millward the other day, actually, who you should definitely go check out, and he brought up the fact that Jean Todd wasn't just a boss, he wasn't just a team leader, he was more of a politician. Which, of course, is so true. I mean, those three guys at Ferrari had almost like a pact, like they always had each other's back. If one were to leave, the others would follow. It was more than just a sport for them, it was more than just winning a Formula One race or winning a championship. It was actually a personal achievement between the three of them, a life achievement, which they all set out to do together. And they all had the same focus, the same end goal to dominate the sport and be great. It was a sort of culture, which is just a winning culture, definitely, but it's on another level. It goes outside of Formula One. When it goes from just being a sport goal to being a life goal and something you live and breathe every day of your life, it's on another level. The mindset is something that elite sports people have in order to dominate and just keep winning. So Ferrari have a bit of a decision on their hands now because changes are obviously being made and I think that that is extremely important and essential if Ferrari want to climb the ladder again. Now I don't know if it's an L or a W for Binotto because he did turn around that disaster in 2020 which was a complete shock really as a Ferrari fan and he did turn it around in 2021. Ferrari bounced back somewhat pretty well, finished third in the constructors standings and in 2022 they were in the title fight for just a little bit, had a few dominant weekends, had some great races, but unfortunately just couldn't keep up with Red Bull in the long term. I'm a bit in the middle with the Bonotto W or L. In terms of winning a championship, of course it is an L because it wasn't achieved, but in terms of improving and turning it around somewhat, I think that is a bit of a W. It's good to see that Ferrari are no longer going to accept mediocrity. I think that that is important because Ferrari this year simply under Binotto, it didn't seem like they were owning up to their own mistakes, or they didn't want to admit that they were wrong in a lot of ways, in my opinion at least. And I think that if you are going to improve, you need to sometimes take 
take responsibility for your mistakes in order to move forward, fill in those gaps so that it doesn't happen again. There are other reports also of Christian Horner and Andreas Seidel who were actually approached previously last year for the role at Ferrari, but both turned it down. I could never see Christian Horner as a Ferrari team principal. It just doesn't really... It's just something I can't see happening. I think Andreas Seidel is still in the conversation if he were to be approached. Now, I mentioned in a previous video that he is very dedicated to the McLaren project, but I still think that when Ferrari give you that call, I mean, it just has to be tempting in some way. Ferrari have an allure about them that not many sports organizations have. The thing I love about Ferrari is how exclusive they are and sometimes how above everyone they put themselves. Sometimes sure it maybe hasn't worked to their advantage in F1, but I feel like the exclusivity of owning a Ferrari is what makes that brand special and what makes someone feel special owning one of their cars. Ferrari are a huge team with a massive history and they've had some of the best moments in Formula One, one of the most dominant eras of all time with Schumacher, but that is the past. And I'm sure Ferrari understand that going forward, there needs to be some changes. There needs to be more organization. There needs to be responsibility from the boss, from the leader to say, all right, I put my hand up. That's on me. Here is how we fix it. Or how do we fix it? Because that's essential. You can't just keep going on and on and on not fixing the holes in your game because there are teams like Red Bull and Mercedes that are going to capitalize and humble you in a way. Ferrari aren't untouchable, just like how Red Bull are not untouchable, just like how Mercedes are not untouchable. It's proof these big teams can fall and they can be beaten. It's the nature of the sport. Though Ferrari are a very, very special team with the allure, I still think you need to understand that this is a team that can be beaten and has been beaten for the last 15 years. Now, we did get close with Alonso. It was very disappointing to me as a Ferrari fan to not see him win a championship because he came so close a couple of times and dragged some performance out of those cars, some of them not even great cars. It really did just blow me away and prove to me, look how good this guy is. We've seen Ferrari when they're on top of their game. They are extremely impressive. Think of Australia this year. Think of that dominance, that grand slam. Think of Austria, just too quick, untouchable. Beating Red Bull in their own backyard. That is Ferrari when they are on top of their game. But Red Bull just kind of ran away from him this year and just took the championship and never looked back. That is what Ferrari needs to be doing. They can't be sitting there and just accepting mediocrity anymore. They don't exactly need to run with the championship. They need to be competitive the whole time. Stay in the title battle until the final lap of the final race of the season, if that is what is necessary. They've got the facilities, they've got the personnel. I believe they have the driver to do it or the drivers to do it. It's only a matter of time. They need to get the managerial structure correct and right and organized and fit. And I think Ferrari will be in a good position going forward. It's going to take a lot to beat Verstappen and Red Bull, just like how it took a lot to beat Lewis and Mercedes. It's not an easy thing to do, but everything needs to be on the same level as those teams. It needs to be almost perfect. No room for error, and if there are errors, you need to know how to fix them. I do think Ferrari have fallen. It has been 15 long years, but the one good thing to take away from this is that it is Ferrari, and they do have what it takes. They do have that potential because they are a big team, but they can't get ahead of themselves and think, because we're Ferrari, we can do what we want.